Hey GED students, um, I had a student Ashley on Facebook send me this little inequality problem. Uh, it's not too tricky of an inequality, but there's a couple of steps here that might trip students up. So I'm actually going to do this two ways. First, I'll do it the way most students uh, tend to handle it and show you that that'll work just fine. And then I'm going to show you a nice trick for what I call getting rid of fractions. So first of all, let's just deal with it the way most students would. So I'll just remind you there's three uh, basic things you'd like to go through when solving linear equations. And most of the equations on the GED are linear. So this is your basic process for most every equation you see. Uh, first of all, uh, what you should do is you should simplify the left and right hand side. If there's any work to do in the equation or inequality, either one, on the left or right hand side, you should go ahead and do that. Uh, this particular problem, though, doesn't have any simplifying to do. I'll show you what I mean. If I consider just the left-hand side, the only operation there is subtraction. But I cannot do that subtraction. I cannot take two-thirds away from x because I don't know what x is. No simplifying to do on the left-hand side. Same thing similarly on the right-hand side here. There's a couple of operations going on. There's this act of addition, plus 11, and there's this act of multiplication. The 2 and the x are shoved together, so they're multiplying. However, because the x is an unknown, I can't do either of these uh, operations. I can't multiply 2 times x because who knows what x is. I can't add 2x and 11 because, again, who knows what x is. So there's not any simplifying to do on this particular problem. So I'm going to go right to the next st step, which is get the letters to the same side. So we're going to get the variable. And when I say letter, I mean the variable we're solving for. In this case, it's an x. Um, so we're going to get the variable that we're solving for to the same side. Notice that I have an x on the left-hand side of the inequality. And when I say left versus right, I'm talking about the two sides of the inequality symbol. I also have a letter on the right-hand side. Yeah, I need the letters to pick a side before I can isolate the letter, get the letter alone. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move uh, one of these terms over. Now you might say, which one? As it turns out, it doesn't really matter. But a good bit of wisdom for inequalities is they're usually easier for students to understand when you get the letter to the left. So I'm going to take away the 2x from the right-hand side and put it over to the left-hand side by subtracting 2x. 2x is a term. It's something that's adding or subtracting, and so you have to move it through addition or subtraction. Okay, great. Let's take a look at what our new inequality will be after making that change. Well, on this side, if I have an x, remember this, if you don't see a number out front, that's one single solitary x, and I take away two x's, I'm going to have one x left, or negative x. Now, I haven't done anything with the minus two-thirds, so that'll stay right there. And that less than symbol, I haven't done anything to flip the inequality sign, so that'll stay right there. 2x minus 2x, of course, zeroes out, and so all I have is plus 11, or positive 11. I'm just going to write 11. Good. Almost done. Almost done. But now I need to work to get the letter alone. So that's the third general step in solving equations or linear equations or inequalities. Now we work to isolate the variable and all that means is get the letter alone so i'm going to go ahead and move away everything that's hanging out on this left hand side with the letter the first thing i need to take away is this minus two-thirds remember that when you're solving you actually work your order of operations backwards so you should move anything that's adding or subtracting first and so i'll do that that two-thirds is subtracting i'm going to move it away by doing the opposite the opposite of subtracting is adding and so let me just erase this little scribble here. And so I'm going to add two thirds to both sides. Now you might be thinking, gross, I hate adding with fractions. Yeah, your calculator can handle the adding with fractions as long as you know what to do. So now what will I see happen on my left hand side? What will my new inequality be? Well, subtracting two thirds and adding two thirds cancels. So I have negative x. I haven't done anything to flip my inequality sign, so it's still less than. And of course, um, 11 and 2 thirds or 11 plus 2 thirds is just 11 and 2 thirds, y'all. Now, you don't have to necessarily write it like this. It could be written as an improper. And you can also convert in your calculator, but I'm just going to do it by hand because it's easy to convert to an improper. So 11 uh, whole things 
and chopping them into three pieces will give me 11 times three pieces, 33, plus the two I already had, 34, 35 pieces. And then I'd have 35 thirds. Now that being said, whichever form I have it in, and again, the GED could ask for either, and it doesn't really matter um, whether you have it as a mixed number or an improper, we're still not done with this equation yet. Why? X is not totally alone. Notice that X is still negative. And so I have one more step I should do. I should get rid of the negative sign. Now you might ask me, well, how could I get rid of a negative sign? Remember that a negative sign is like the act of multiplying by negative one. Negative X is like negative one times X. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides by negative one. Now, really cool thing happens. When you divide by negative one, all that basically happens is you change the sign. So on um, this left-hand side, the negative is going to cancel and I'm going to be left with just an X. But careful, notice what you just did. You just divided by a negative number. We keep saying anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number in an inequality, it flips the inequality symbol. Negating both sides actually changes the relationship between the left and right side. So where you once had a less than symbol, you'll now have a greater than symbol. And of course, all that will happen to my number over here is it will change signs. So it'll become a negative 11 and 2 thirds. Or if I were doing it to this guy on the right hand side, we'd get the same exact thing. And again, it doesn't matter which way you go, okay? Dividing by negative 1 on both sides would give me a positive x. It would flip my inequality sign to be a greater than, and it would change the sign of my number. Okay, so that's two ways to say the exact same thing. Uh, that being said, the answer could be either way on your GED. But notice, notice a couple of things. One, my inequality sign flipped. Why? Because I divided by a negative. Um, and uh, I, actually, I think that's all I want you to notice. So this was a little bit of a pain because of the fractions. So I'm going to show you now this lovely trick for getting rid of fractions. Now, the good news is, even if you do it this way, um, whichever way we do it, we're going to get the same answer. Uh, but let's try this sucker again um, and use my trick. So we had x minus 2 thirds. Oh, I already forgot the problem. Is less than 2x plus 11. Plus 11. Okay, looking at it this way. So um, the day you got equations and inequalities in algebra was the day you got the power to get rid of fractions. You might be saying, how? How? How could I ever get rid of fractions? Well, I hope you remember that when, like, let me just come over here and show you a little example. Uh, when we took fractions and we multiplied uh, them by whole numbers, a really cool thing could happen. Basically, um, numbers that were the same on the top and the bottom could cancel out. And so like in, in a case like this, I would end up with a whole number, 2, 2 over 1, which is just 2. Now, that being said, I can use that to get rid of the fraction here. This is what I'm going to do. I notice that my fraction has a bottom size of 3. I do not want to have a fraction. I'm going to multiply the entire left-hand side by 3. You might say, Kate, how is that? legal. Well, we know that within equations and inequalities, we can do whatever we want uh, as long as we do it to both sides. I'm going to use that power to get rid of fractions. I'm going to come over here and multiply the entire right hand side by three. And now let's see how this lovely trick, again, legal because I did it to both sides, is going to actually make my life easier by getting rid of fractions. Let's take a look. So this is an act of simplifying that I'm going to do. So I'm going to pass out this multiplication to both these numbers. Uh, three times x 3 times x is, of course, just 3x. And this is where it gets really cool. 3 times negative 2 over 3. Well, if you have the same number, top and bottom, it just cancels in a fraction. And so what I get is minus 2. I haven't done anything uh, to change the sign. I didn't multiply or divide by a negative. So my inequality symbol will still be a less than symbol. And I'll pass out my multiplication here as well. 3 times 2x is 6x. And 3 times 11 is 33. Okay, now I just don't have fractions in my problem anymore. I'm still going to go my same basic route. I'm going to simplify the left and right hand side if possible. Eh, there's nothing to do. I'll skip over that. Second thing I'll do, I'll get all my letters to the left since it's an inequality. I'll subtract 6x from both sides. 
Now 3x uh, minus 6x is negative 3x. I haven't done anything to the minus 2, it stays. I haven't done anything to change my inequality sign, it stays. 6x minus 6x zeroes out, so all I'm left with is 33. Great. Uh, now I got all the letters to the left-hand side. It is time to isolate the variable. Time to work to get the letter alone. And again, remember, you should move anything that's adding or subtracting first because when we're solving, we work the order of operations backwards. So I'm going to move this guy who's subtracting right now by doing the opposite. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. On the left-hand side, subtracting 2 and adding 2 will cancel so that my negative 3x is alone. And on the right-hand side, 33 plus 2 is 35. Almost done, but I have got to get the letter alone. Currently, this x is multiplying with negative 3. Multiplying because they're shoved together like that. Well, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. I'll divide by exactly the number I want to get rid of. I'm going to divide by negative 3. Cool. Now let's see what our new inequality will be. On the left-hand side, multiplying by negative 3 and dividing by negative 3 are opposites, so they cancel. x is alone. Now, remember, this and this is the super duper important part. Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, your inequality sign will flip. Negating both sides of the equation flips the inequality sign. So my less than sign will turn into a greater than sign. And what is 35 divided by negative 3? Well, 3 doesn't go perfectly into uh, 35. So all you got to do is pull the negative out front and call that a fraction. And that's how a mathematician would do it x is greater than negative 35 over 3. Now you can see whichever way I did it, if I did it the way a student would usually do it, or if I did it with that wonderful trick to get rid of fractions, I still get that same answer. Um, so it's not like I did some different kind of math. In fact, you have a lot of power when you're solving equations, um, which means that even the couple of ways that I demonstrated wouldn't be necessarily the only ways to attack this problem. Um, Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.